Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online build video with me, Sherman. Today, we are looking at the Dragon Guard. That's right, you guys heard that correctly? It is called the Dragon Guard. This is a build that I came out with a while back. Um, I never really changed anything about it since that point until, uh, actually, Horns of the Reach dropped. And then I went in and did some tinkering with it. And then when Clockwork City dropped, I realized that the build wasn't working as well as it could. So I've done some rework to it and just to let you guys know yes i play this in pve this yes i play the same build in pvp yes i play this build in dungeons and it is trial ready so i just don't play this build in trials because my templar tank to me is better that's just but that's personal preference that's just my opinion so let's go ahead and go over the build itself starting with the stats so if you look here, we have 14 in the health, 50 in the stamina. That gives us a nice balance of good health, good stamina with this build. And we still have a 14k Magicka, which is right where we really need to be with this build. Um, our re recovery rates aren't the greatest, but if I could get better with this build, I would. But I just can't. I can't, you can't, I can't get it any better right now. If you look at the, the weapon damage, it has good weapon damage, good crit. Um, the reason why you want that higher, a little bit higher crit than, than other people is because you want your abilities to have the most effect. And sometimes that ability requires you to crit or something like that to get, you want to get the greater effect out of it. Um, some of your heals, things like that. So that's why I have it. But um, the high weapon damage is basically to help the group do damage. <coughs> Excuse me. So moving on to the resistances, we do have a 25k resistance, spell resistance with a 23k physical. Um, still really good setup here and still works out really well. Moving on down here, we are running the Warrior Munda Stone. <laughs> and I like using the Warrior Munda Stone with this build because of the extra weapon damage itself. It's just a really nice one. If you want to use something else, you can. It's, it's truly, it's up to you. But this build, is, this build is made to help the group kill the boss. It is not made to stand there and go, look at me, block. <laughs> Sorry. Um, moving on, we are running Evan Armor. We have Major Savagery because we have Expert Hunter on our bar. And we are also using all, uh, tri stat food uh, for the increased stats. So. Alrighty, moving on to the gear. So on the gear side, we are running a traditional older style setup. But that's okay because it still works even today. So we are running a two-piece blood spawn. I don't have the right setup here. I do want to get this changed um, from reinforced to like infused. But it works as it is. And as you guys can see, I don't have it upgraded. Like all my gear upgraded to the best quality of stats and all that kind of stuff. Like I'm not wearing all gold enchants. Um, it's all purple enchants. It's all purple gear. Mostly. <coughs> mostly. <laughs> I say that with a reason. So this is reinforced. This is the reinforced as you can see. Um, I like to wear reinforced over sturdy. And there's a reason for that. Is because you already get a lot of block cost reduction. With using the sword and board. And you can get extra from your champion points. That gives you about a 50% reduced cost in your blocking. It's like a 55%. And... If you need more than that, you can get sturdy, a couple sturdy pieces and put it on the build. But honestly, it's not really needed because you're not blocking every attack. You're using other forms to mitigate damage, other ways of mitigating damage. All right, moving on. We are running <coughs> a five-piece Nightmother's Gaze. I know, why? We're your tank. Why not use, like, Alkosh? I don't have access to Alkosh. Um, I don't have access to a lot of other sets, and this works the best for me. Because I do crit, and when I do crit, I do get that 6 seconds of that extra penetration for the build. That allows me, as a player, to do more damage. So, that's the reason why. Alright, moving on. So, 5 pieces of Night Mothers. Uh, the Night Mothers that I'm wearing, and where I'm wearing it, is the chest, the belt, the legs, and then the sword and board, and the dual wield. And I'll get to the dual wield and why here in a second. So moving on, we all are also wearing the Ebon set, of course. Um, I'm wearing the gloves and the boots in this because that's what I got. I found and, and found the easiest and got and was like, wow, this is really great. I like this. So I've been using it. 
and using it a, a lot lately. Um, this build has always had Evan armor though since the beginning, but I've been using it a lot more or lose it using this build a lot more lately uh, for to get their Undaunted, to get uh, to just farm out specific gear, things like that, because I can get into a group and people don't complain. <laughs> so that's why. All right, moving on down to the jewelry. Now, the jewelry isn't perfect, guys. So I do have two blue pieces still. I can't seem to get any purple to drop um, when I run that dungeon. I run that dungeon a lot. So I only have purple enchants on these, along with the necklace, which is a purple enchant. I have two weapon damage and a uh, magic recovery on this. You can go with something else if you want to on the magic recovery side, because you don't really need to worry about it. DKs get a lot of resources back from ultimate. So, and this build generates a lot of ultimate, so don't worry about it. You get ultimate a lot, <laughs> so you'll be able to fire off abilities a lot faster. It's just that that magic recovery uh, just kind of gives you that little bit of that you need here to give you your resources to get the, the skills off. So moving on to the sword and board, and if you guys are running, yes, I do the four, re uh, the Nern Honed. This will be changed to Nern Honed, reinforced, reinforced. If you can, just get this in Nerd Home and get this reinforced for now. You'll be fine. Uh, but if you can, get this changed over to Nerd Home as quickly as you can. Because it'll give you the better resistance values. And it <coughs> that'll help you reach those higher numbers. So, And once this is all golded out, you'll have a 26k spell resistance with a 24k physical on the sword and board. And when you switch bars, you'll drop to a 23 so don't don't stress it too much, and you don't really need to stress it with the build because you're running blood spawn, which procs a lot and it gives you six thousand extra resistances. So, <coughs> yes, I still use the resistance thing for the tank itself. Don't worry about being over <coughs> having over resistance with this build either. It just gives you greater survivability, is all. Not by much, but it does. So, down here we are running a Infused Sword with a Crusher Enchant, a Nernhone. It should be a Nernhone Shield, but uh, I didn't craft a Nernhone Shield. I just left the reinforced one she had and just went with it. And it, it still works. It's just with Nernhone you'll have over a 2k armor value. So, it puts you over 3,500 resistances. Alright, so that's what I have. Er Infuse sword with Crusher Enchant, and then down here I am using two Defending Swords. One with Absorbed Stamina and the uh, Stamina Return. The other one is using a Weapon Damage Enchant. This is a 5 second cooldown, <coughs> and so it's going to go off every... You know, and and I, I want to say every 5 seconds, but it's not true. It's like every 10 seconds you'll get that extra thing with a 5 second cooldown. That's fine. Um, you don't need the damage all the time because you are a tank. It's ma mainly for when you're solo playing or if you're in a trash fight in a dungeon. You have a way of doing some extra damage. And the dual wield really does help with this build because it gives you just that much better damage control with your character. So you can just get that little bit more out. Um, the reason I chose this setup is because, like I said... I want to be able to do damage as a tank. I don't want to be a, a tank that doesn't help the group do damage. I, I That's why I make my builds the way I do, is so that you can offer some group stuff. Um, the group more than just buffs and debuffs and things like that. You can actually do some damage because you're going to get your debuffs off anyways. Why not add a little bit more? So that's um, that. Now let's move on to the skills. So on the front bar here, now I do need to change this, guys, I'm not going to lie, but I do run Ransack, and the reason I run Ransack is because I'm a DK. I don't get really high physical resistance, as you guys can tell, because the DK has a natural um, magic buff that gives him a greater magic resistance, and I think that's under Draconic Powers. Right here. Increase the spell resistance by 3,300. I don't get that in stamina or in physical resistance. So Ransack works really good for that because it gives you that minor resolve, which boosts your physical resistance. But it also gives you minor or major fracture. And it, as you can see, it doesn't give you major um, breach. Most healers these days or most, you know, most people have the Magicka one that gives Magicka back from the destruction line equipped. And... So I don't see a purpose for me to have that. So I just kind of got rid of it and said, you know, what, I'm good. I, I've got this. 
Um, this does do a decent amount of damage, especially if you have a higher weapon damage and a higher, you know, penetration, that kind of thing. That's why I use the Night Mother's Gaze, is to get the greater damage from this. Uh, it, it just helps out in the long run. But that minor resolve is the big reason why. Moving on, we have Deep Slash, not Heroic Slash. I know a lot of people are like, but Heroic Slash gives you this much more ultimate. You won't notice it. You really won't notice a difference in your ultimate generation with or without it. Nine ultimate over nine seconds is not a huge deal when you can get 16 from a helmet. Or is it 14 now? I don't remember. But all I know is I generate uh, way too much ultimate to fire off my abilities. Next up is a damage ability, uh, Venomous Claw. You can switch this out, and I would suggest if you have the, the stuff to do it, to switch this out. Switch this out for something else that gives you greater um, defenses. So, like, even maybe a heal. Like, if you have the Alliance War ability, like you guys can see, I've been working on my Alliance War stuff. Um, Vigor works really well and would probably be the best option to put in place of Venomous Claw. But Venomous Claw, as you can see, is a really cheap ability to cast, and it does a lot of damage over time. So that's the main reason why I do use it. Also, in, um, the more damage it deals, the greater, or the longer it lasts, the more damage it deals. So it's, it's like, so the poison seeps in the turret and deals increased damage the longer it lasts, dealing 12% more damage every two seconds. So every two seconds, it's dealing more and more, building up to 12%. So that's another reason why I keep it, is because it's a really good damage over time ability. And with this build, you're not doing a lot of focusing on getting, um, you, you apply abilities and then heavy attacks. So next up is a floater skill for now, because I don't have vigor to swap out, um, is green dragon blood. It's a nice heal, I'm not gonna lie. Um, you draw on Dracon Draconic Blood to heal yourself for 36% of your missing health. So the more health you're missing, the bigger the heal it'll be. It also gives you minor, uh, or major fortitude and major endurance and, and minor vitality, increasing your healing, your health recovery, your stamina recovery, and your healing received. This is the only way that a DK can get stamina recovery, period. They can't get it in their class at all. They can't get magic recovery in their class. It is nothing but, like... Healing received, health, health stuff, and it's, it's crazy. So this is a great ability to use for that stamina recovery and for that healing received. And then on top of that, the uh, major endurance, that, that little bit of health recovery. I know it seems crazy, like why do you need health recovery? Healing does so much better. It's just there. So Next up we have Evil Hunter. Now I use Evil Hunter. Some people like to use Camouflage. I like to use Evil Hunter. And the reason I like to use Evil Hunter is because of what it does. It reduces the cost, stamina cost of your fighter's guild abilities. And if you decide you want to do this switch around in the next, it, you know, for yourself, you can. <coughs> I just don't have it unlocked, so. And that's why I don't have a fighter's guild ability slotted, or I would. And I would use this ability to get that cheaper cost in, in the fighter's guild ability. So, next up we have Standard of Might. Now, why are we using Standard of Might? Is because it does an am am amazing amount of damage. It also applies Major Defile against the enemy, which reduces their healing received. It lasts for 17 seconds. It increases your damage and reduces the damage you take by 15%. And then on top of that, somebody can activate it as a synergy, dealing a massive <coughs> flame damage to the enemy. Uh, that the, it, to, to the enemy standing in the area that the banner is set in. And it, and it mobilizes them for 5 seconds. It's a really good synergy. Especially if you wait for it to get down to its last second. And you, you activate it. <coughs> get good damage off. On all the enemies around you. Plus you get that. It's really good for group play. Moving on to the next bar. We are on the dual wield bar. Now you guys are going to see something very similar here. To that of a DPS or something like that. Don't be worried. There's a reason why I play it this way. So first off, we have Blood Craze. We use Blood Craze for the really for the for the, the excessive extra damage. You know, we want that extra dot damage. This is a dot build. So you apply, leave it alone. So you use Blood Craze to apply the bleed, leave it alone. Don't cast it again. Don't do anything until it wears off. You play this like a DPS, but not in the same sense. You apply, forget about it. If it goes off, don't you don't have to rush to reapply it. Reapply it when you can. 
And it also has a pretty good heel for you, like a tick heel, which you don't have. So, so moving on to the next one, we are using Noxious Breath. This is a great ability. Regardless of what a lot of people say, this is a great ability because it applies major fracture to multiple enemies. I like to play this build when I'm playing with a group of stamina people, especially, because I can apply that major <laughs> fracture to a lot of enemies. And it just helps with their DPS, helps them burn them down quicker, that kind of thing, especially in trash fights. Moving on to the next one, we are running Igneous Weapon. Now, I run Igneous Weapon for the major weapon damage, major brutality, but it's also nice because it gives your whole group, like six people, I think it's six people, um, major sorcery and major brutality, and they don't have to have it slotted on their bar or anything like that, and it, do, it, it also saves them some potion count uses, because you can keep this up a lot easier. So moving on, we have Hardened Armor. Now, I like Hardened Armor. A lot of people like the other one. I like Hardened Armor mainly because it does really good, like, resistance values. But on top of that, you also get a small damage shield for 3.5 seconds. And then while the armor is active, it returns 607 magic damage back to the melee attackers. That's okay, but it, <clears throat> you can't get it to get any better unless you boost your Magicka. And I'm not playing the Magicka tank, so. Alright, moving on. Evil Hunter again, and then the next one is ma Magma Shell. Now, I use Magma Shell because Ignite and Molten Lava in your veins, limiting incoming damage by 3% of your max health. So, 3% of my max health is a lot. It, 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 it mitigates a lot of damage. On top of that, it does flame damage to nearby enemies uh, for 10.8 seconds. And then when activated, nearby allies gain a damage shield for 110% of, of their max health. So, of their max health. So, it's a really powerful shield for them. And it's a really good, like, safety net for me. So, I use this in dungeons and in trials, yes. <laughs> because it's a really good, oh crap button. Now, if I, if I could... Honestly, what I would do is I would get the support ability barrier put in in its place because it's a lot better version of a shield. It's a really powerful shield. And then I would actually switch out banner. And then this is going to catch you all off guard. With Dawnbreaker. Flawless Dawnbreaker. There's a big reason why. Because of the amount of AoE damage it has and the fact that it boosts your weapon damage by 5%. That, and I would put Vigor in place of Green Dragon's Blood. Now, you guys notice, I'm not using the, the DK's damage shield. There's a reason why. After lots and lots of testing of the shield, this thing gives me a 3,396 point damage shield. If you do not have a lot of Magicka, this shield sucks. Period. This thing gives me a 5k damage shield. 5k damage, I can mitigate with a heal. I can mitigate with a heal better than I can with this. Yes, it applies to my whole group, but why am I going to give them a, a 3k shield when my Magicka doesn't give them a greater shield? This shield is based off of max Magicka only. So it does not work on a stamina build. That's why I don't use it. It's useless to me. A better shield for me to use, because I am a stamina build, would be to use Bone Shield. Because this gives me a percentage of my health in a damage shield. But I don't want to use this damage shield either, because it's just not that great. So I do block a lot of attacks. I spend mo a majority of my time, when I fight, doing heavy attacks, applying those dots, and blocking. Because I can mitigate more damage that way. Now, I don't literally stand doing this, like some people, because it's a waste of resources. It's a waste of resources that doesn't allow me to do the damage I need. So, let's go ahead and see this build in battle before we go take a look at the rest of it. So, I always start off with Noxious Breath, apply Twin Slashes, switch over, taunt, do that, and then, of course, this. And if you watch, I, I do block attacks. I, I, I don't hold it. I block major attacks. Because I can do that. And that's pretty much how the build works. 
It's you want to apply those abilities when you can and heavy attack the rest of the time. As long as you have a dot applied, just one. You don't need all, all the dots applied at once. Just one dot applied, you can do heavy attacks and be fine. And still get 10 to 12k DPS if you're good at it. <coughs> but this is not made to do that kind of a DPS. You're not doing a DPS rotation. You're applying, leaving alone. Heavy attacking as much as you can. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, if you want to make this build more like reliable tanking, less damage, you can make some adjustments, remove some of these abilities that do damage, and you can you can switch them out for things like like chains. If you want chains, you can grab the uh, unrelenting grip, which I think is the one that pulls. Yeah, so you can grab this. You can put it in place of like noxious breath and. Um, but always keep Blood Craze because Blood Craze is a really powerful ability and it's a really good heal for you. Unless you have Vigor. If you have Vigor, then you can give up Blood Craze. <laughs> and then I would probably put the Venomous Claw here because it's just a really nice dot for you as a DK. Um, on this side, I would probably remove both of these. And yeah, then I would probably think about running something like Talons in place of this. And then I would run Fragmented Shield. I don't run Ignea Shield because that, even with that 25% heal, the shield gets removed in one second. Like, literally one second. Because most enemies do, in Dungeons and Trials, do more than 5k damage. So they just strip it, like, instantly. Because those things, your damage shields don't get damage reduction. They don't get your, your armor resistance values. They have no armor resistance, nothing. They just have the, the ability to absorb a shield, or absorb the damage. That's why I don't like Fragmented Shield or Obsidian Shield for this build. It just doesn't work. It's good, but it's not, it's not the best. You can get better. Now, if you want to switch this out, I always switch it out for Green Dragon's Blood. And as you can see right there, it gave me a 9,000. Sorry, 9,000 point shield, which isn't bad. It's, it's a good shield, but it's not that good. Not when, when the other one does 36% of my max health, which is almost 15 or 10 or 12k. So it's it's a much bone shield's a much bigger shield, and much better. Um, it's it doesn't have the group utility, which kind of sucks. But you know what? Not everything's about group utility. Sometimes it's it's sometimes about your own your own survivability because your allies aren't meant to be taking damage. It's your job to mitigate most of the incoming damage on you, because you have to get to keep the attention of the boss on you. That's the role of a tank. Is to keep the enemies off your allies and be survivable. Be able to mitigate the damage. So, um, Just so you guys know, this is an Imperial Dragon Knight. You can, <coughs> you can use whatever race you want. I chose the Imperial because it was easier to get to the values I have. Um, and I also went with the lower values because if I do use Warhorn, Warhorn will cover my resources. Like, it'll just boost me right above it. But I have played this build in pretty much all content already and it's done fine i've tanked some trials with it done fine without warhorn without vigor without all that other stuff um but the group knew i wasn't using those things so they kind of compensated we worked together we organized so uh so let's go ahead and move on to the champion points champion points very similar to most of my tanks really easy guys 23 in the Ironclad. I know what you're wondering. Why not extra damage reduction? Blah, blah, blah. Remember, I use Banner of Might. That gives me 15% damage reduction. That stacks with my damage reduction. So I don't really need it. The extra. I only need it when I, when it's necessary. And I, um, I, I determine when it's necessary with Banner. So, and Banner is my main go-to ability all the time. If I'm not using Banner, then I use Magma Shell for those oh crap moments. <coughs> Alright. So moving on. 20 into spell shield. This gives us extra spell resistance. You don't really need it because blood spawn does cover a lot of your resistance missing, but it's a really nice one to have. It's really nice to have that resistance value a little higher just in case something happens. All right, moving on. 43 in a hardy, 43 in an elemental defender. Both give you 10% damage reduction from poison, disease, physical. Frost, Flame, Shock, and Magic Damage, and then 23 in the Thick Skin. This reduces damage taken from damage over time by 10%. You want these filled out because you want bulwark, bulwark. 
uh, the most. This is the, you need 30 points in here to get it. Uh, it's a really good thing because it increases the resistance value of your shield or your frost staff. And it's any, like, sword and shield by 1500. So you really want that there. You want that spell and physical resistance increase. You really need it as a tank. All right, moving on over here, we have 23 in a Bastion. This increases the effectiveness of your damage shields by 10%. That's why that one does grow so big. It's because I get 10% more on top of it. So I get that it, it adds to that 200% or 300%. All right, moving on, Expert Defender, uh, really good to have it at 10% because it stacks with the other ones. So if you get hit by a light and heavy attack that does, uh, you know, like from an enemy, which most NPCs or most enemies in the game, in the PvE side, do light or heavy attacks. So the getting that extra 10% in there just reduces the amount of damage you take even more. And you're getting hit the most anyways. <laughs> uh, next up, we have 39 into physical or heavy armor focus. You have to have this here. Sorry, you just have to. You can't, you can't get by without the 30, at least 30 something to give you 3k physical resistance. You need that 3k. If you don't have the 3k, you're kind of like in a bad place. I'm just going to tell you now. But yeah, this works out a lot better with this. Um, but you don't really need it. Again, you are wearing the blood spawn, which gives you 6k resistances, which procs a lot. So, all right, moving on over here, we have 23 in the Warlord. This reduces the cost to break free. Yes, break free is important, even in PvP, even in PvE. So getting that reduced cost saves you stamina. Why is stamina so important for a tank? Because you do block attacks, yes. But you also use a, quite a bit of stamina abilities with this build, so you want that greater resource management. This allows for greater resource management. <coughs> Moving on, we have 16 into bashing focus. This gives us a 10% reduced cost in our bash abilities. We are using the sword and board, so we get also extra reduced cost in bash abilities, but we also get increased bash damage with sword and board. So that's kind of a nice benefit there. Moving on, we have 43 in the Mooncalf, 43 in the Arcanus. This gives us both m stamina and magic recovery increased by 10%. DKs get, like I said, they get no recovery rate whatsoever, except from that one ability, dragon, you know, green, and it's only green dragon's blood. So trying to get, like, magic recovery, things like that is really hard on them. So having this higher really helps. Now, you don't need this much, to be honest. You could drop this down and increase this, like... You could remove this completely and take this up to 75. Take the remaining points and just jump it into here. You can do that and, it, and you can still get by because you are a stamina build and that magic recovery would play better for you. So taking this up to 75 would give you a 14% extra magic recovery. So that's an option if you want to do that. Next up, 43 into Tenexi. This is super, super essential, guys. I, I see a lot of builds where people don't put this in on the tank. They, they, they think that the tank doesn't need it. This is the most reliable way of getting a resource back on a tank is heavy attacks. Like, you cannot get your resources back fast enough through somebody feeding you resources because you're limited to how much resources you can be given. So, like how, how often you can be given resources. So, having the heavy attack, fully charged heavy attacks to get those resources back really, really help. Yes, and just so, so everyone knows, yes, I have played this build through Hellrush Citadel, fine, did not die, <laughs> yes, I have played through this through Sanctum, or Ethereum Archive, just fine, I haven't played through Sanctum Ophidium or Maw with it, but I have played the new trial with it, all of those I did fine, and it worked out really well, I like this, I just like this build, the way it's set up, it works out really well, um, like you said, on the dual wield side, you don't need those abilities there, like the damage abilities if you don't want them, but I would always keep the poison slashes on there. Like, that, that is one I always keep on there because of the amount of damage it can pull off. <coughs> uh, the poison talons, that's the one. Alright, moving over, 56 on the Shadow Ward, this reduces your block cost by 20%. This, on top of the fact that you get a 36% reduced cost in blocking, you get a 56% reduced cost. You don't really need any more than that. That's no lie. If you can get it up to 24%, yeah, then you're at 30%, you know, or 40% reduced cost. Or, not 40 sorry, 60% reduced cost. And that'll save you some more resources, but you don't need as much block cost as people make out because... 
<coughs> you only do that if you're doing a block build, like a non-stop block build. This is a block build, but you know what? I can still get by without it because I don't need that much. It's not like the block costs are like sucking through my resources. Trust me, they're not. Um, next up, the foul. I do put six points in here. That 6% really plays good with... A certain skill. I want to show you guys the skill because I use this skill a lot, especially on certain bosses. Um, reverberating Bash. As you guys can see, it does a th it increases the major to file by 31%, and I use this along with Banner, so I can like reduce an enemy's, uh, you know, th made you know, give a major to file with this. When this wears off, I'll drop Banner. Then I'll do this again, and I'll keep this up consistently until I can fire Banner off. Once I can drop Banner again, I, I don't even use Reverb Bash for that fight. <coughs> but usually by the time I drop this a second, maybe third time, the boss is dead. So it's... But yeah, that's pretty much that. Let's go back in here, and we're going to cover the mage. So here you guys will see I do have 43 in the Blast only, because I only use it for the 10% healing of Green Dragon's Blood right now, but once I get um, the damage shield from the Alliance War, the barrier, and I get the Vigor, I will have a better reason for this then. So I want to have this here to cover that when it, when I get it. It's gonna It's mainly for Vigor and Barrier. Moving on, I have 36 into Physical Weapon Expert. This gives me a 10% increase in my physical, uh, or my light and heavy attack damage. And then I have 39 into here. This gives me 15%. Don't worry that it says it's like, you know, 1572. Don't worry about that 72%. I did the 39 in here because I didn't want to put like one point somewhere else. Or two points, I think. It's like one or two points somewhere else. It just, it, there was no reason to. So I just put them here. And it gives me a 15%. So these two together is a 35% increase to my d direct damage. Which means my light and heavy attacks do 35% more damage. On top of that, when I get the enemy below 25% health, I do get this. But I also get Reposit. So anytime I block, and it doesn't matter what I'm blocking with, dual wield or the sword and board, I get this 4,000 damage to revert back against the enemy. And that can be boosted. Oops. <clears throat> that can be boosted with increased weapon damage. So if you increase your weapon damage, it will be boosted. And as you can see, it went from 4,000 to 5,706. That's a big increase. That's 1,700 extra weapon damage almost. Uh, it's, it's absurd. Like, that's just crazy. So moving on, we have 23 into Shattering Blows. Why Shattering Blows? Well, I said this build I use in PvE and PvP. That's why. So I can strip people of their damage shields a lot quicker. That 10% plays a lot into it. Trust me. <laughs> it helps out a lot. Not only in PvP, but also in PvE and certain boss encounters and stuff like that. So moving on over here, we have 43 into Mighty. This increases our physical, poison, and disease damage by another 10%. That means light and heavy attacks not only are boosted by 35, but they are boosted by 45%. That's almost 50% increase. Remember, when they drop below 25% health, that is a 5% increase. That is a 50% increase in damage. So it's really good to get them below that 25%. I would have used Kvetches like I do with my Templar, but Kvetches works better with my Templar than my DK. I tried it. Um, this works the best with this D with this build because, look, I have no points in piercing. So getting that, using the Crusher enchant, using that other thing. I have a 10k penetration almost. I can just strip them of their, their, their resistance values and just destroy them. I know, it's... it's I don't really destroy them, but I do get a lot of damage. So, uh, Next up, we have 23 in the Thaumaturge and 23 in the First Strike Strikes. This gives us 10% increased damage over time. This gives us a 10% increase uh, to our critical strikes. Um, this uh, right here is really good because it increases our crit damage by another 10%. So normally crit damage is increased by 50%. This extra 10% makes it 60%. Tanks aren't meant to be DPS. But they can do damage. They can't do as much as the DPS. In fact, it's about anywhere between 10 to 15k less, depending. <coughs> Sometimes even 20k if you can do 32k DPS. But most tanks can pull 10k DPS easy. I know, it's not enough. But the minimum requirements for doing trials is 20k DPS to get, get it done. And it's easy to reach 20k DPS with any build, with any DPS build. So... 
Yeah, if a tank can pull 10, that's half of that. Next up, uh, the Thaumaturge thing, like I said, I use a lot of dots, so that 10% increase really helps out. Now, you can get more out of it if you were to take points out of other things, but I don't really see a purpose in that when I want the, the overall experience to be about my light and heavy attack damage. Those extra dot damage is really good. That's why I said you want to keep a dot on this build, and the main one you want to keep is this, is Venomous Claw, because of the amount of damage it does. You can see it does there, it does 10k damage over 10 seconds, and that's unbuffed. As soon as you buff up, now it's 11k damage, almost 12k damage, and it does good damage up front. It does 4k damage up front, which if that crits, it can do up to 6k damage up front. So it's a good amount of damage up front, and it's a good amount of damage over time, because that poison damage can also crit. So it's, you want that greater, you know, the, the better version of the, the crit. So that one's really good over Blood Craze. You can see Blood Craze only does 9k damage. So Blood Craze isn't that good for this. It's good for the heal. And as you can see, even the, the, the heal I get is almost 1,000 health every two seconds. It's a really nice heal over time. <coughs> so that's why you want to use Igneous Weapon too, is to increase those heals and increase your damage capability. It's the main reason why. Is it because it does increase the healing capability of your character and you want those greater heals. So if you have barrier, like if I had barrier on this build and I did, I buffed up with my, that thing, that heal would actually be, this one here would actually be greater with barrier. Barrier would grow in its, its healing strength. Um, the same thing with the uh, vigor would grow in its, its healing strength. Nothing else, you know, like, none of my other stuff really gets affected besides my damage here. Do you look? This does 6,000. This does seven, almost 7K. And if it crits, it does even more. Um, and it, you can crit, by the way, on the side damage there where you hit the two other targets. You can crit on those and get, um, you know, 3K damage out of them. So you can hit them up to 3K, which is really nice, hitting two other targets for 3K. And if you're hitting one with Deep Slash. Now, I use this just to apply Minor Maim, that's it. So if I can apply Minor Maim to more targets, the better off I am. So that's pretty much the build in a nutshell. I know it doesn't look like it w would work to a lot of people, but it does. It's a very, very good build. I've been playing this build for over a, over six months, I think. Um, and it, it just it works out really, really well. Like This is a really powerful setup for the way it works. Now, it would be better to have Barrier, Vigor, and possibly Dawnbreaker if you want that extra weapon damage, which will boost Vigor's recovery and Barrier's um, healing. But you could switch out Barrier for Warhorn if you need to. There's a lot of different things you can do. It's really up to the player to decide. But again, it's just this, this setup, the way it is, works really well. And you can, like I said, you can opt out certain skills for other skills if you want them. As you can see here, I do have certain skills unlocked. I didn't have chains unlocked because I never really used it. Um, but I do have talent, choking talons unlocked because I was using it. And where I put choking talons was right here. Because I want it next, I want it on this sword and board bar. Because of what it does. It is a minor maim for 6 seconds. It's not as good as this deep slash is minor maim because this lasts 12 seconds. This is actually just... You know, it's a good way to hold a lot of enemies and apply minor maim, but it only can only apply it to uh, anything standing within six meters, and it can only be affected to six targets. So it's not as good as it looks. It's good, but it's not great. Like you, there's better abilities out there. So yeah, but that's pretty much it for this build, guys. I hope that this this um that you guys like it. And I hope it's something that you guys do do want to try out. If there is something you guys want to alter for yourself, don't be afraid to. Go ahead and alter what you need to. This is a build. This is just a template and a guide. That's it. It is not a forced play style. This is a choice. And that's what I'm here to do is offer you guys more variety and choices than what the meta has to offer, which is one. So, and it's a lot like this one. <laughs> so, or was. It's actually changed now. But yeah, this is just another option. And yes, this does work in the new trial, at least on normal. I haven't tried it on vet mode um, with this build. I have done it with my, my Templar on vet mode and, and survived with 32, 32k health, so this should make it too. Um, you might just want to kick that health up a little bit. So maybe drop the warrior, get the, get the, um, the Lord Stone that gives you the extra health. That might be the better option, the Lord Mundus Stone. 
<coughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can hit the subscribe button. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy, we'll see you all later. Bye.